We made it through customs. <laughs> we got all the bags checked, even the bike in record time. Air Canada was awesome. Thank you, Air Canada. put it together here where we're uh, just taking our bike out of the box that we got on that tour in uh, Amsterdam it's been to Cuba and back since then and they've got a little place to put your bike together here a little place to hang your bike and a pump to pump it up so Mike's putting back together the derailleur he's really good at this got the bike back together uh, everything seems to be working right and we have to now say goodbye to this bike box. This bike box took us back from the Netherlands and took us on a Cuba bike tour, but now we have to abandon it. We'll have to get another box in Berlin. Leaving Copenhagen airport on our way into the city. Can't wait. So here we are at the airport, just leaving. And there's of course a bike path. That's the airport there. And here's the bike path here. That's how you do it. Great. Here we are biking. There's the sidewalk for the pedestrians, there's the bike lane, there's where the cars park, and then there's the where the cars drive. Three kilometers from the airport and already we're seeing families cycling and uh, the, the infrastructure for the bicycle and the pedestrians and the cars is safe and sensible so that everybody has a place where they can uh, ride and move. One of the things that really impressed us about Copenhagen is their practice of building protected bike lanes even when there's construction. They build these amazing temporary completely separated protected bike lanes when there's construction and when there's construction you think about it you kind of need it more than regular times because there's a lot more cramped space and it's a bit more dangerous. Look at all the bikes. So awesome. It's a new apartment. Here's our place. I'm gonna walk through here. And here's the courtyard. You can see our bike is down there, all safe and sound with the other bikes. What do you think, Lise? We're here in Copenhagen, city of bikes, and we're going to spend the day biking around and checking out their infrastructure and sharing it with you, what they've done to make this maybe the most bike-friendly city in the world. This is a classic intersection here in Copenhagen. You can see there's two lights dedicated exclusively to bicycles. They will go orange first to let you know to get going, and then launch you off. There's a big red light for the cars there. There's also, uh, further up, lights for pedestrians. Orange means get ready. Green means go. We're here at the entrance to Christiania, which is a artist community uh, in the center of Copenhagen. Uh, that has been occupied by artists since the 1970s. They've taken over the area, it operates kind of on its own rules and self-governs itself. Um, and they make the Christiana bikes here. Yes, they do. And the very, bike carts. Very cool bikes. It's the Christiania bike workshop. It's pretty cool. Here 
right now. I'll do that. Yeah. So you can that. Yeah. Lunchtime in Copenhagen. We're having. I'm having some Danish food here. Smørbrød, smørbrød, I think we're saying, and uh, it's open face sandwiches, pickled herring, and some other kind of fish there. With And I got a nice IPA beer as well. I'm gonna try that out and see how that is. Yum. Mm. Mm. Copenhagen and we're totally impressed with the infrastructure. As you can see, there's three different curb levels. First one for cars, second one for bikes, third one for pedestrians. And it's really amazing that everybody's separated and respectful and moving really easily. What's so great about the curbs is that it provides a barrier between all the different means of transportation. It lets you know where you're supposed to go and where it's safe for you to move. So everyone's got their own space. Everyone has their own space. Wow. We're here in Copenhagen, city of bikes, and as you can see behind me, this is a normal intersection. We're at a stop sign where everyone's just waiting. There are hundreds of bikes going by every minute. Typical to see lots of different kinds of cyclists going by. So what's happening, Lise? We were watching uh, Danish TV and happened to be watching the news just for fun, even though we didn't understand it. And then all of a sudden we saw a report about Scan Scandinavian lines or the, the ferry. We we're going from Gedster to Rostock. We re realized that something's going on. So we went online to see if we could still book tickets because we didn't book ahead of time. And thankfully, we found out that that ferry is actually not running at all so we need to figure out a new route completely to get to Rostock and we're gonna work on that right now <laughs> it's completely changed our plans we don't know what we're gonna do there we go. maybe we'll have to take a train to Melmo Sweden 
and then go from there and ride down to Trailburg and then take a different ferry and get to Rostock. So we're here at the train station trying to get tickets, but everything's closed because it's, what time is it now? Quarter to 12. And uh, so tomorrow we're going to have to figure out if we can get a train to Sweden to get us to Germany.